Good evening, everyone. My name is Chris Cooper, known as the Channel Guy Trader, and I'm reporting to you live from Wall Street Trading's Miami office down in sunny South Florida. Today's date is Thursday, June the 20th, 2013, and here is today's After the Bell Market Summary brought to you by WallStreetTrading.com. Well, guys, what a wild day in the markets today. We had a sell-off across the board in all the different asset classes. Just about every stock in the market was down. Only a couple were actually able to hold up. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look to see how the market closed, how the different indices closed here for the session. The Dow Jones closed down close to 354 points. The NASDAQ closed down to a little over 78.5 points. And the S&P 500 closed down close to 41 points. If we take a look at the breadth on the market today, we had 5,613 issues declining on the NYSE, NASDAQ, and the AMX. And we had 604 issues advancing on the NYSE, NASDAQ, and the AMX. If you do the math, that's about a little over a 9 to 1 ratio in favor of the bears. So we had some heavy selling take place in the markets today, guys, and it had to do with the Fed yesterday saying that they were going to do some tapering. You know, it took time for people to come, you know, people, uh, investors, traders, they looked over the FOMC and, uh, you know, notes, I guess, overnight. We had some, uh, and obviously they were able to analyze the notes a little bit more and decide how they wanted to adjust their portfolio. And some people, of course, decided to take risk off the table today. At the same time, we had some, uh, Bad numbers come out from the China PMI showing that they're actually slowing down over there and they could be in a liquidity crunch. And supposedly, I even read an article talking about a possible bank run. Now, I wouldn't go to that extreme. At the same time, I have to look up some more information to see. I do know they are possibly um, going under a liquidity crisis right now. Again, I have to read into some more of this stuff because a lot of articles out there like to publish a lot of uh, you know nonsense stuff to kind of scare the public and stuff. So we'll see. But either way, Let's go ahead and break down the markets here. We had the SPY down $4.05, down 2.5%, closing at 159.40, breaking below the key 50-day uh, moving average that we've been watching here for the past couple of days, of course. You guys can see we, you know, we tested that moving average here in a short amount of time. It's not like we uh, bounced off of it the first time and then rallied up and hanged around here. You know, we actually bounced off of it, came back up and tested it the next week. We bounced off of it, came back up and again tested it this week and broke down. So that just shows you how the, uh, you know, how the market is acting right now. There's just, you know, a lot of uh, fear in the market. As you can tell by the VIX today. And we're going to review that VIX again as well because we finally hit some levels that we haven't seen in the VIX since back in December. So, again, back to the SPY here. We broke below the 50-day moving average, which which was around this 162 area. You can see they tried to rally us up a little bit here in the morning, but they sold that right back down, and we broke below all these support levels, and we broke below this little key uh, mini upward channel that you could have that you could draw in right there. We also broke below this key little pivot level that we have right here <clears throat> from the high that we made, the pivot high that we made back here on April 11th, and then um, this key trend line that we've been tracking. Oops, sorry about that. This key trend line that we've been tracking since back here from the low that we made back here in February 26th to the April 18th lows right there. And then we broke that trend line here today, which was around the 160, 65 area. So the next level we have to watch, moving average wise, is right here at 158.06. That is a two, that is a 100-day simple and exponential moving average right there at 158. That's most likely going to be a possible target for tomorrow. And then the next level to watch after that is going to be down here around 157, which I think we'll be able to get some scalping opportunities and some good names down here. As you can see, those prior resistance, prior resistance we broke above, so now support. Resistance again broke back above it, so now support. So this is definitely a key inflection level to watch. 157 will definitely, um, you know, we're going to start putting a list of some names together that we're going to be looking to buy on that dip down there if we get down there. Uh, some stocks that are kind of maybe showing some relative strength or some stocks that are not going down or some, st some stocks that are, you know, holding above some key averages, uh, giving a buy opportunity into some rising moving averages, different things of that nature. But uh, right now, SPY definitely, you can see the the sellers are in control. Just take a look at the volume. You know, highest volume we have had in a while. Let me just zoom my chart out here. We haven't had this heavy selling volume today. Let's go back. I got to even go back two years here. Two years. We haven't seen that type of volume in the market since back here in. Uh, let's see, back here. Uh, let's see, this is May 18th of May 18th of uh, last year of 2012. There, so. Again, something definitely have to take note of, and you know, hopefully, if you guys have been watching these videos, you guys have been able to maneuver through the markets pretty clean, at least knowing which levels to watch and which levels are of, of uh, importance. So, just keep on these levels tomorrow, and we'll see what happens. So, we again, 158 
100 days simple moving average, exponential moving average down there, which could be a target, the 157. And then if we give, you know, the resistance is going to be back here at this 159.71 level, call it 160. From that little pivot, from this little key trend line I just explained, to, that I just showed you to you guys. And then uh, this key trend line that we broke today, which is going to be back around that 160. That, uh, let's see here, tomorrow will be like around 160.80. All right, let's go and take a look at the triple Qs, the NASDAQ 100 ETF. You can see even the NASDAQ 100 ETF is not looking too uh, good right now. We broke back below that key trend line that we've been tracking here. All right, and I'll bring up my NASDAQ, uh, my NASDAQ futures proprietary channel system to see how that's looking now, of course, because that was the, uh, you know, that was the um, chart that we were able to analyze and uh, kind of gauge the by the breakout point in the in the tech stocks in the NASDAQ, per se. So we'll look at that here shortly as well, but. We broke below 71.50. The top of the range was here. It was at 73.50. Got a break down here. Next support level, we have to watch back to the downside. Looks to be around 70.61. 70, uh, 70, oh, give me one second. My software is frozen here. Uh, one second. All right. Sorry about that. Looks like it's going to be around here, around 70.61. Uh, that level is going to be coming from the little highs that we made back here in September of last year. We break below 70.61. Uh, the next level that we're going to be watching is going to be right here around 70. We break below 70. We have this area down here around 69.50, 69. All right. Um, I would think that 69 would be a good level to buy. As you guys can see, we had all this little price consolidation that I've been tracking since back here in March that we had broke out. We broke down below. We broke back above it. So that's going to be a, another area to watch. 69 would be definitely a good level to look for some uh, scalp opportunities for some longs or look to buy some good names that have pulled back from the market sell-off. Let's go and take a look at that NASDAQ futures ETF here. All right. I mean, sorry, not NASDAQ futures ETF, but the actual NASDAQ index in my channel system. And you can see that we broke right back below this key trend line from what we call the breakout. It should have acted as support. Acted as support you know, once, twice, but this time it failed. We got a big sell bar, strong volume, second consecutive lower close down there. Looks like the target's going to be back down towards the bottom of the channel. All right, down here around 28.25 will be a target we're looking for if we continue to see the selling pressure. If we can get back above this trend line right here, which is around 29.45, then we'll be a little bit more um, bullish to neutral on the marks. But right now, we're kind of uh, in protection mode. Uh, you know, managing our risk accordingly. That little consolidation pattern that we had from the squeeze pattern did not play out to the top side. It actually played out to the downside, and uh, this could, you know, this could be something that we, uh, you know, that some people out there aren't expecting. I mean, we had the bond sell off today. Take a look at the TLT. <clears throat> you figure people will go be ru rushing to buy the bonds, but they were not rushing to buy the bonds. I mean, again, ever since we called the uh, sell off in the bonds to get short the bonds to buy the TMV. That trade has been working. The bonds have been showing weakness. I've had I even had I even had a couple guys on Facebook, you know, looking at bonds and say, hey, maybe bonds could go up, you know, when you know, maybe bonds could catch a bid. And you know, they're just not catching a bid. Bonds are weak right now. And we broke below the neckline of the head and shoulders pattern that we pointed out to you guys on the TLT about a month ago. And so far that trade's working out right. So if you followed us on that one, good job. Um, but again, uh, if we continue to hold below 112 on the uh, TLT here, that's not going to be good. We got to bounce right off the 200-day exponential moving average on the weekly. Next support down here, moving average-wise, is right here, the 200-day moving average. Simple moving average around 107, and then 106 is just some regular price support from back here in August of uh, 2011. All right, so again, all asset classes got sold off today. Equities, commodities, bonds. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the Russell 2000 via the IWM, which is the Russell 2000 ETF. The Russell 2000, as well, was not able to break over 100. It was carving out that resistance up there, was not able to break, and now it's coming back into some prior uh, resistance, which is now active support right, right here around 95. If we break below 95, we have 93.82, which lines up with the 100-day simple and exponential moving average. We break below that, then we have this 93 level to watch which comes from this little pivot high right here above support below resistance above support uh, below resistance above support so that's a key inflection level to watch as well all right now i didn't get to show you guys the es analysis here so let me go back to that if you guys know i've been tracking the es uh, these key trend lines from the es chart ever since we had this little head and shoulders back here from see march 
from the from Mar February to uh, March of last year, that little head and shoulders pattern that we had broke that we had break down right here. I've been tracking those key trend lines because that was a key, uh, that was a very important moment. Uh, I should not say moment, but that was a very important period during that quarter when we were selling off and we had this little this nice selling pressure come in. And now <clears throat> those trend lines are coming back into play the same way they came back into play right here when we talked about uh, you know watching that key trend line as we had that compression pattern and then when they broke out that Friday from the jobless uh, from the employment numbers well that key trend that we were holding right there we broke back above it which also lined up with these lows and that caused for some more fierce selling of the market which caused that VIX to spike up which we'll be taking a look at here shortly so again price wise the next support on the ES a good support level down on the ES really is until like right back down here around 1540 Okay, then we have some we have some support down here around 1570. All right, so if we break below today's lows, look for 1570. We break below 1570, we could definitely get some more selling pressure down towards 1560, maybe even these 1550s. Of course, it's not it's not going to happen overnight unless we get some type of flash crash, which obviously uh, we do not want to see that. Um, you know, we'll create there's definitely be opportunities, but we don't want to see a flash crash. I'm pretty sure some of you guys have 401k and some of you guys have investments that you guys don't want to see go down like that. So, uh, let's see here. So, from trend line analysis wise, the level that we're going to be watching is 1570 trend line, this 1550 trend line, 1540 trend line. Again, that, these key trend lines come from this uh, head and shoulders breakdown that we had right here from the right shoulder to the head trend line and all that other good stuff. All right, so that's the ES. Let's go and take a look at the volatility index. I want to make sure I cover this today here. The VIX. All right, we haven't seen these levels since back here in uh, since back here in, in December and, and uh, yeah, since back here in December of last year. All right, we broke through this big band of resistance that we've been carving out here from October to you know trying to break above it and fell in to trying to break above it and get it rejected to trying to break back inside of it, get her injected, you know, except this time we're seeing a little bit of change in characteristics here. We're actually seeing the VIX spike up, all right, with a nice little breakout bar back above 19, all right, and we started noticing that ever since we had this little consolidation that broke out and these little higher pivots that were being made, all right, and we'll see. Next resistance level on the VIX is going to be back up here towards these uh, 23, these 23s, 2294, 23s. All right, and we uh, want to see what happens there. As you guys know, every time the VIX spikes up, it's been getting smashed down, spikes up, smashed down, spikes up, smashed down. You know, is this going to be another change here where this time we don't get smacked down? The VIX is actually going to start holding above 19. We'll be good if you're an active trader like we are. It will be good because we're definitely going to be seeing some nice ranges in some of these stocks. But if you're an investor, you're going to be looking at your portfolio going up and down. It's probably going to drive you a little bit crazy. So you want to make sure you manage your risk accordingly. Take risk off the t take risk off the table. Uh, being in cash is not a problem. You know, there's nothing wrong with being cash. Some people think you have to be invested in the market all the time because they want to feel like a super trader or a super investor. No, you could be in cash as well. Uh, so VIX. Let's go and take a look at the currency. The dollar index was strong today. And the euro dollar was weak. You can take a look. The dollar had a nice little bounce back over this 82. Was not able to hold above 82, but we did get a nice little follow through candle from the um, strong candle we had yesterday from the test of that support level that held down here around 80. So the dollar is looking pretty strong. If you take a look at the euro, the euro is looking weak. Had it some more selling pressure today. All right. And then we bounce right off of that prior resistance now support on this side we'll have to see if we can hold back above this 132 level if we uh, break back below 132 we start holding back below the, below that uh, if we break back below 132 we break below yesterday's lows or to say today's lows because this is from today's candlestick here we could see some selling pressure right back inside that little range which I'm actually going to highlight again right here and then I'm going to take off the study so you guys can see the chart pattern the analysis here a little bit cleaner there we go prior resistance acted as support a little bit today but if we break back below that level we could get some nice uh, some nice selling pressure let's go ahead and take a look at the commodities starting off with crude oil crude oil was on its way to try to break over 98 but obviously the uh, global economy is not getting um, as good as most people were expecting and crude oil got hit pretty hard at 98 and uh, if obviously if the global economy is not getting better then um, crude oil has no reason to be at high at these prices unless there's like a war that's going to happen or something like that. So, you know, there's going to be less demand for oil. So, keeping on this key trend line right here, 
All right, this is, uh, you know, hopefully this is not a little, well, actually it doesn't matter because we're not invested in crude oil right now. We're just watching it. But this could be a possible rising wedge, so you want to make sure you keep an eye on this little trend line right here, this trend line right here, this 93.90 area. All right, we take a look at commodities, uh, gold, that is, gold futures here. They got smashed pretty hard today guys uh, yesterday I mentioned that the GLD had an inverted cup and handle pattern on it well that played out today and this is a gold futures chart but of course it has the same pattern and if you take a look at the target here we have uh, let's see what's the bottom of this little cup or the, I should say the bottom of the cup or the top of the inverted cup whatever you want to say uh, 1340 all the way to a high of uh, 1480 alright so we're talking about hundred and forty dollars there so we can see this drop $140 below this 1340 level, which would take us down to 1200. That would be a measured move target from this little inverted cup and inverted cup and handle pattern. If you just take a look at the GLD, because this is one that I showed yesterday in yesterday's video here, the GLD gap down, you got your inverted cup and handle pattern, right? 130.82, call it 131, all the way to the top of the cup right here, around 142, call it 141. So we're talking 10 bucks, 10 bucks to the downside take this down to 120 or around 119 area and we'll have to gauge it from there all right let's go ahead and take a look now at uh, the gold miners the gold miners as well they got hit pretty hard today all right, the gold miners have been showing some weakness as you guys know these precious metals we've been saying to stay away from the precious metals unless you short the names because they just have not been showing any traction at all and the GDX broke below 2632 and it's been going down since ever since it broke out of this little five-day range that it had it's been you know getting that nice little fall to selling pressure which is good if you're short or good if you're uh, you know if you're selling naked calls or something like that you know there's various strategies that you can use um, GDX silver SLV we'll take a look at this as well SLV got smacked down today broke below that low yesterday got a confirmation close below this low yesterday and had some more selling pressure today you could take a look at copper we'll take a look at the copper futures forward slash HG all right, and even same thing. Copper futures here are back at those lows. All right, so what are these metals telling us? One, obviously, you know, there's no inf there's no inflation. Okay, Every, people are talking about deflation. There's no inflation with all this money printing that's been going on. They have not been able to in you know, to inflate anything. They've been inflating the market, but as far as create inflation, they have not been able to create inf inflation like I think they were trying to do. Well, not like I think they were trying to do, like they were trying to do. Uh, they were not able to do that and now things are looking a little bit dire here and um, looks like we could be in the process of having a uh, global commodity sell-off here so we got to keep a close eye on this action uh, I think that's about it as far as the basic stuff that we usually cover here in these videos let's go and take a look at a couple of stocks even though I'm not really going to go through many stocks because all of them got pretty hit hard today I mean Goldman Sachs broke below those 20 moving averages gap down and sold off I mean, the financials were all weak across the board. J.P. Morgan broke below the 20-day moving average. Still has support from the 50-day moving average right there, but still looking pretty weak. Bank of America, this one got hammered today. Uh, was able to recover off the lows, but, you know, opened up right here at 1309 and sold all the way off to 1281. It actually hit a high, sorry, hit a high of 1314 and sold off all the way to 1280. I mean, doesn't look like it got hammered, but if you take a look at the daily chart here, this thing just... <sighs> not able to rally at all so um yeah let's go ahead and take a look now at lulu because this was a trade that we took in the chat room today so i want to go over this daily chart here i had a couple guys on facebook saying hey why are you shorting lulu there's better stocks out there to trade but the reason why i was shorting lulu and the reason why i got our traders in our chat room mywallstreettv.com to short lulu at 63.79 was because if you take a look at the market right here the es look what the market has been doing the past couple of days or so it's been trying it's been an uptrend right trying to move higher look what Lulu's been doing for the past couple of days it's been moving sideways to lower that's showing you relative weakness that's why we shorted it intraday and that's why we made some decent money on it take a look at the five minute chart okay the setup was a short right here all right which that one didn't play out as well as we would have liked but then the big money came once we finally got the seller that was once he finally got the buyer that was holding the 6340 bid to drop and we started holding below 6350 this was when we got short again right here at the 6351 area and um, you can see the nice move to the downside 
All right. So if you aren't, if you are not following us on Facebook, make sure you go check us out. It is Wall Street Trading. We post a lot of key information there. If you don't have Facebook and you're not a big fan of Facebook, then you can follow us on Google Plus. We don't post that much information on the Google Plus page intraday. Most of the action is on the Facebook page, so you want to check that out. Or, of course, you can just come to the chat room. So again, guys, I'm not going to go through a whole bunch of charts today because all of them look like death. We'll analyze more stuff tomorrow, um, and you have to be in the chat room or check our Facebook page to see what we're looking at. Have a great day, folks. Hope you guys were able to make some money. If you're interested in trading with our prop firm, contact me at ccooper at wallstreettrading.com. I can explain to you how to get started, what a prop firm is, the pros, the cons, whatever you need to, whatever you need to look at, whatever you want to know about prop firms. I'll let you guys know. I'm one of the good guys in the business. Eh, you know, I'm not saying that uh, everybody in the business is bad, but you know, there's some people out there, some companies out there that you want to watch for, out for, and we're not one of them. Have a great day, folks. Cheers.